Hey there, welcome to day 23 of the Get Up and Go Challenge. Sharon Hornelstrom here, and we still have six different areas and aspects of our life to apply some soap to, to wash up, to scrub up, to have an example of how can we deal with these other areas of our life. We've got a mental, emotional, spiritual uh, contribution, all the C's, communication, and confidence. And so I'm going to do one a day, starting today with emotional soap. I'm going to share a tool. We're going to run through the soap framework. I'm going to give an example. Then you, on your own time, it only takes a couple of minutes, right, to run through the soap framework. We've done it a few times now. You're going to pick an emotion and you're going to apply the soap framework it. Apply the soap framework to it. Can you tell I have a head cold and something's going on with my throat? So today, uh, what emotion should I pick? I could pick fear. I could pick uh, unworthiness or not feeling good enough. I could pick uh, we can pick a positive one, but usually we don't have a problem with the positive emotions. Although we can take the soul framework and we can take something that we're feeling that we like feeling and we can intensify it and feel more of it. So it works either any way we want to. We can use it on any emotion that we want. Get my tickly throat. So let's see. How about if I take fear? Let's look at fear. Uh, a lot of people are afraid right now. Afraid to step out of our comfort zone, afraid because COVID, afraid because there's violence in some of our cities, here in America at least, and around the world, there's been violence in a lot of cities for a long time. But we're really getting hit hard here in America over the last year or so. And so a lot of people are afraid. I know that I don't go places like in Minneapolis that I used to feel perfectly comfortable going. I just don't go there anymore. Partly because of COVID, but more importantly because of the violence and the nonsense that's been going on in that city. Uh, and there's many other examples around the country as well and around the world as well. <coughs> so I would say, and I'd be hard pressed to admit it, but I'm, I'm afraid to go there. So I'm just not going to go. So what's my story? Let's look at our S from our soap framework. That's our story in our situation. Fear. What am I afraid of? Well, right now I got a cold yesterday, started coughing. And so what fear, doubt, worry, or frustration pops up? Oh, I might have the COVID. Not sure how I would have gotten it since I haven't been around anyone really. But maybe I touched something. Maybe I, I did something. Maybe the germs were just rolling through the air in a place that I walked by. Don't know. Maybe it's just a common allergy. It's spring here in Wisconsin. So maybe I'm just getting a cold. And I usually get something in my sinuses or my head in the spring because there's so many trees budding and flowers blooming and seeds and everything going on. And I like to tell the world and myself that I don't have any allergies. But I'm probably lying to myself, and it's just an allergic reaction to springtime and all the things that are popping around. So I'm afraid I'm afraid I have allergies, right? So what is something that I'm afraid of? What's the story I'm telling myself right now that <clears throat> I might I might have something seriously wrong with me? Or what I want to do is get out of the mites and not go online and look into any kind of throat thing I could have, or I'll probably have throat cancer and I'm going to die in a week, right? So... Just deal with the situation as it is. So what am I doing? I'm drinking some uh, cold medicine remedies, naturopathic cold medicine remedies, some hot teas. I'm drinking a lot of hot tea, taking a, a Benadryl in case it's just an allergic reaction and things like that. Plus my normal vitamins, drink a lot of fluids, yada, yada, yada. Those are the things I'm actually doing. But what's my current situation? Current situation is I woke up with a tickle in my throat that's turned into a cough. That's it. That's all it is. It could be anything, right? How many things have we had? How many colds have we had in our life? How many uh, allergic reactions? How many things have we had like that in our life? Been there, done that, right? So there's no reason for me to be afraid of it. Um, but I want to practice something called the rampage of desire. What do I really want? I want to not be afraid to try new things, to stretch my comfort zone. I want to be able to feel perfectly healthy and not be afraid that Every time I get a little tick or a symptom that is not usual for me, I freak out and I think that it's the end of the world. So I want to be confident and comfortable in knowing that, like everybody else, we get little bugs along the way and it doesn't mean it's a, it's a dire uh, diagnosis or something bad that's going on. It's just our body's way of dealing with changes in our environment. So <clears throat> that's the story in the situation. Very long-winded, but where I am right now, Got a, got a tickle in my throat. Where do I want to be? Tickle free. I want to have perfect health. Going on a trip in less than a week now. And so I definitely don't want to be feeling under the weather to go on a trip. It's a couple weeks long. 
and maybe that's it. Maybe psychologically, I'm a little nervous about traveling and going, and so my body's saying, hmm, we're going to give you a taste of what's going to happen when you fly in that plane. I don't know. Past beliefs come up. So I want to look at what are the different options and ways I can deal with my fear of being sick or feeling under the weather. I'm going to, I like to use the 10, the 3, and then the 1 as I discover and find possible solutions to get me from where I am to where I want to be. So what are some possible solutions to get feeling awesome? And I already cheated and talked about some of them. Some of the things that I'm doing are drinking the, the hot beverages that have the, the uh, nutrients and the vitamin C and zinc and everything in them, some packets of those in a hot fluid because I feel better, hot feels better on my throat right now. What are some other things I could possibly do? I could go to the doctor, right? I could go get a COVID test. I could do a bunch of those things. So I'm going to list off like 10 things I could do to reduce my fear around this particular possible consequence, possibly having something. Now, fear, I think we've all heard the, the acronym false expectations appearing real. I don't know about you, but if I look back on my life, of all the things I've been afraid of, not even one in a thousand has actually ever happened. Not, I mean, it, the amount of things that I've been afraid of that actually came to pass are virtually non-existent. So I want to make sure that I am thinking about that and reminding myself as I go through the SOAP framework. Now, I've got the SOAP framework installed in my subconscious. So <clears throat> yesterday, as soon as I started feeling this way, I, I went from fear to action almost immediately, right? I didn't wait to go through all these steps as I'm describing them to you. It happened almost instantaneously. <clears throat> so the tool I want to talk about today, and you may or may not have heard of it, is the EGS, your emotional guidance system. Now, each and every one of us are equipped with an emotional guidance system. We all have emotions, right? Anyone? Anyone not have emotions? If you don't have emotions, share in the comments below because I want to meet you. Uh, but I'm going to assume that we all have emotions and that there's an emotion that feels better for us or worse than us. Now, if you go online and you Google emotional guidance system, you'll get a whole emotional list of where the emotions are ranked based on the vibrations that they put out. <coughs> so, for example, love is a higher vibrating emotion than doubt, worry, fear, hate, anger, pessimism, optimism. They're all on there. And so if you pick an emotion, you can go to the emotional guidance system, and one of the actions you can take is you can look that up and say, okay, well... Uh, anger actually feels better than um, helplessness, so I'm going to find a way to get mad about this, and that's going to feel better to me and cause me to take action more than if I just lavish and feel lavish, lament, and feel helpless all the time. So we're going to look at all the possible options, and we're going to pick one. And I like to use something that's fast and easy to pick the action I'm going to take. And it's usually, what's the fastest, easiest thing I can do to get a, a result that will impact meaning lower the fear that I'm feeling, or if you're doing a positive emotion, that will give me a boost in the positive emotion that I'm feeling. I pick that thing and I do it. And that leads us to the P in our soul framework, which is progress. How do I know if I'm moving in the direction I wanna go? If I take a Benadryl, a quick action I could take, and I feel better, then I'm moving in the direction I wanna go. Because I, I don't wanna be afraid of getting sick. I don't wanna feel sick. I guess I'm kinda of combining health and fear all together, but you ever have something wrong with you physically, doesn't that immediately trigger fear? Yeah. <coughs> so let me take a peek at an example of, of when I did this before, because I'm not trying to explain this very well. In progress, we want to know, how do I know I'm making results? So let's run through the SOAP framework just with a quick understanding of what we're doing on each of the steps. S, story, situation. What's going on right now? What do you want it to be? You can use something like a rampage of desire where you're just brainstorming how you want the, the feeling to be in your life. Mostly, if it's a negative feeling, we want it to be minimized or go away. If it's a positive feeling, we want it to be accentuated and we want more of it. We want it to be exploding in abundance. If I say, um, and that's not a good one, that's a financial one. So every time I think of one, I'm like, they can be put in different categories. Because emotional well-being is one of those things that underpins everything else we do, right? I don't know if you know it or not, but everything we do as human beings, we do based on emotions. And we feel emotions first, and then we think and decide and choose how we're going to react or respond. 
unless it's a fight or flight thing, and then fear is going to automatically kick in either our flight or other questioning to determine what we're going to do about a situation. It's going to all happen in our subconscious. We are not going to, we're seldom going to consciously think about this entire process and work it through like we're doing throughout the challenge. But we need to do it throughout the challenge so we can install it in our subconscious so it's a tool that automatically works for us each and every time we face a change or a challenge. So <clears throat> the ask story situation, that creates a gap because it's always different where we want to be than where we are. Even if you're super duper successful and you're not afraid of anything and you have a huge comfort zone, oh, you can just go with the flow all the time, there's going to be something that comes up in your life that scares you or makes you want to feel stuck or stay in your comfort zone. Absolutely positively will be, no matter how much you've done and what you've done in your life. Unless you have that disorder that actually makes you it, impossible to feel pain or something. I know I can't remember the name of it, but it sounds terrible. Uh, <clears throat> so that gap, the rest of the soul framework is about filling the gap. It's about exploring what are the possible options and things that you could do if it were possible to make even the tiniest move from where you are to where you want to be. Uh, the A is all about picking one of those things, taking action, and then the P is about making progress. Once we see if we're making results in the, the direction we want to go, we're going to automate the things that are working, right? We're going to find ways to make it a habit, a ritual, a routine, a process, a system that we could always delegate to someone else. But guess what? The one thing you can't really delegate to anyone else is your emotions. So we need to figure out how we're going to handle this each and every time. Now, I learned something cool yesterday that I kind of want to share, and it's going to make me go long, but I think it's worth it. <clears throat> we were talking about, in a, in a coaching program I'm in, our emotions and how, and our beliefs and how difficult it is to change our emotions, which lead to experiences and our beliefs. And that if we take <clears throat> and ask the question, how can I, instead of why, so often we default to why. Why am I afraid? Why can't I do this? Why is it too scary for me to step out of my comfort zone? Why do I worry all the time? If we ask ourselves why, our subconscious is going to serve up an answer, and it won't even have to make sense, but we'll keep going around in that loop forever. And we end up focusing on the problem and what's wrong with us instead of solutions to that and to make it better. And so we were coached to ask a how question instead of why, to kind of accept the belief as it is, in order to start to change it so that our subconscious doesn't think we're full of it. Like, I do affirmations a lot. And if I look at all the years I've been doing affirmations and affirmations, the results I've gotten out of those, I, I'm sure I'm better off than if I hadn't been doing them, but they're not massively dynamic. And I think it's because a lot of the affirmations I do, my subconscious says, ha, 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 who are you kidding? Not ever going to happen. And I don't say that consciously because I'm trying to talk myself into achieving my long-term goals and objectives and these and these affirm, using affirmations to do that. <coughs> but I was taught to dream big. So some of the affirmations, the things I'm affirming are for my gigantic world-changing goals. And my subconscious just laughs at that, right? I guess I haven't done anything near that. So <coughs> by asking, how can I, uh, if I'm afraid of something, how can I... I'm, I am afraid of heights, so for example. So, how can I? I'm not. I'm gonna mess this up. I was gonna say, how can I be afraid of heights and still um, be effective in my job or do the things that I need to do? Uh, I remember in corporate America, one of my jobs was for a giant industrial bakery, and we had this humongous flour silo. And once in a while, I would have to climb up there to inspect and and give people tours for quality inspections and things of the top of this tower. You know, it was, on a, I don't remember how many steps, there were at least 100 steps up this giant ladder. And there was kind of a cage thing in the back of it, just a little thing. But I, would, I could get up that, but coming down, I would make everybody leave the room so I could take my time climbing down that giant ladder. And then after I did it a few times, I wasn't afraid of it, sort of like everything else we're afraid of. We're only afraid of the unknown, but once we do something, it eliminates the fear immediately. But we have to be able to talk ourselves into doing the thing that will eliminate that fear. And if uh, we shut ourselves down before we even consider the possible options for eliminating that, that feeling, that fear, that, that um, disappointment, whatever you're feeling, frustration. I've actually done this exercise on frustration, and it eliminated, and I redefined how I, I define frustration. And so it's really hard 
for me to get frustrated these days. And I used to get frustrated at the drop of a pin. It was crazy. So, emotional guidance system. Just do this today. Try using the SOAP framework on an emotion that you feel often. Any emotion. Pick one and then just run through it. And share in the comments below your experience. Positive, negative, an aha, something you learned, something that worked, something that didn't work. Or if you're struggling, put the emotion that you're struggling with in the box below and I will do a video or we'll do a live Q&A and I will walk through that specific example. And that would give me a chance to think of a better how question for fear than uh, I'm thinking right now. My brain isn't working on how. Uh, the examples that the uh, coach gave were for I don't have enough time. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how many times I said that. I'm overwhelmed. I'm overworked. I don't have enough time. Probably 100,000 times I've said that in my life about my life. No, my life is very different with COVID and, and, and being online versus offline. But that was one of my favorite things to say. And that was inferring that I never got enough done, right? <coughs> but if I ask, how can I get even more done than I am already? That presupposes that I am not getting enough done. Whether that's true or false, it doesn't matter. But if I say something like, I am a, I am always efficient and effective, I, my subconscious knows that's a lie. That affirmation wouldn't work for me. But if I say, how can I get even more done than I'm getting done already? That opens me up to the possibilities of, hey, yeah, I might not be getting, getting enough done. I might not be being, being a, as effective as I want to be right now. But now my subconscious is going to serve me up different ways that I can get more done, that I can be more effective, that I am getting more done than I already am. Versus why why do I not have enough time? If I, if I ask why do I not have enough time, my subconscious is going to serve me up all the ways I'm wasting time, all the things I'm doing that I probably could or, should, or shouldn't be doing because I need that time for other higher priority things. All right, now I'm rambling. That is our emotional soap for today tomorrow we will do mental soap we'll do mental soap tomorrow and thoughts and i will have my thoughts better hopefully my cold will be less foggy tomorrow and i'll be able to explain it well any questions hit me up in the comments below otherwise have an absolutely amazing day do this soap framework apply it to one of your emotions any emotions and again if you're struggling with it, stick the emotion in the comments below, and I'll just type up a couple of sentences about how we can walk our way through that. I'm not sure I'm going to talk a whole lot more today. Have an awesome day, and I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow. Bye.